This is a life-size Noah's Ark, and it is huge. One and a half times the length of a football field, half the width of a football field. From ground level to the roof is seven stories high to the biggest timber frame structure in the world. Just about everyone around the earth has heard of Noah and the ark and, and the flood. The fact that the Bible has this account, a man and his family built this great big wooden ship and all the land dwelling air breathing animals were represented on this ship and the whole world was flooded. That account itself just fascinates children and adults alike. And so we decided to build a life-size Noah's Ark based upon the dimensions in the Bible. In 2010, Answers in Genesis began designing the ark as a true timber frame structure. And we also met with Amish carpenters who were willing to come and build the wooden structure for us. In May of 2014, we actually kicked off the building of the ark with a hammer and peg ceremony. In July 2015, the Amish carpenters began putting up the wooden structure. The Ark was completed over the next 13 months, and so we were able to open the Ark on July 7, 2016. As people go inside, they will identify with Noah and his family. We just didn't build props inside the Ark. I mean, take the cages. We built the real things, but we built them as functioning cages so that people could see how we could feed the animals, how they could be watered, how waste could be taken away. We wanted people to see that this really did occur. Amen. Good morning, Grace Walk. So I'm preaching about Noah and his faith this morning. And I'm going to tie it into my last sermon that I preached on imagination. And we're going to go through. But one thing I want you to understand is God wants us to use our imagination. But with that comes responsibility of work. And I'm going to show you how we are to partner with God as God gives us imagination, gives us dreams, gives us vision, then we are the ones. See, God didn't build the ark. He could have. He didn't build the ark. Noah built the ark. God has given you a dream. He's given you a, He's not going to build that for you. He's going to help you. He's going to guide you. He's going to give you plans if you walk righteously with him, but you're going to have to put your hand to that. See, unless you make a commitment for your dream to come to pass, it's just going to be a dream. We have to have commitment in our life for God to use us to the greatest extent that he wants to use us. See, Noah built that ark day by day, day by day. The Bible says that God told Noah to build the ark and put his children and their children on it. That was year 500. Noah had been alive. Five, he was a late bloomer before he had kids. But the rain didn't come until year 600. See, year by year, Noah worked on that ark. Day by day. Now, in rabbinical teaching, they will tell you that it, he was, it probably took 50-some years to build that ark. I had figured when I read that, I thought, oh, it's 100 years. Probably took him 100 years. But I didn't calculate in that his kids would be married and have children. So uh, at, at the ark place that we just watched, they calculate around 75 years. There's a scripture in <coughs> Genesis that says that man's days will be 120 years. Some people believe it took was 120 years. I don't know what it was, but if it was 50 years, that's a lot of labor. 
And when you watch that video, you saw cranes there. No, it didn't have cranes. You saw lumber that was cut in square, milled by a sawmill. No, it didn't have that. But he labored with a vision to build, to partner with God. We are called to partner with God. Listen to me. We know we're God's friends, but we, we, many times we lose the understanding that it's effort and labor to have our dreams fulfilled. And these are God-given dreams. So we're all building a boat, so to speak, for God. But we're also living our life, and God wants the best out of each and every one of our lives. And my mission is to take every person that attends and watches online. I want to welcome everybody watching online. And I want you to take the next step up in your life. I want to get you just one step higher than what you thought you could go. See, Noah was not only faithful, but he was committed to the work. Many times that vision, that dream that we want, that company we want to start, that program we want to do is a lot of work. But, do, but Noah took dominion of his life and did what God commanded mankind to do, to take dominion over the earth. So he had, to, he had to take dominion over the trees, some way figure out how to cut them, some way figure out how to measure. Most of the measurements that they go off of was from here to here. That's how they used their measurement. But he, you could see, God gave him the plans, but he had to do the labor to build the ark. Does that make sense? But this commitment is often where our dreams die. God speaks to us, we know, and we get sidetracked and we never press on forward. Noah said it would rain even though it had not rained. Noah walked around and said <clears throat> and preached righteousness. Noah believed God that he would save. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So he believed God would save him and his family. And he created this kind of ocean liner that was unheard of in his day. God wants you and I to create. He wants to give you an imagination and he wants you to create in every aspect of your life. Now we're going to go back and review what I preached a couple of weeks ago. But in this time when I, when I go over these scriptures, I'm going to show you where... Faith also needs a response. There also has to be an action to your faith. So in Hebrews 11, it says, By faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Your testimony every day of your life is how God helped you get through the next day. How God did this creative miracle for you. How God did this for you. And we have substance because we can go into the Old Testament and we know if God did it for them in the Old Testament, He can do it for us. We have the New Testament where God did supernatural creative miracles. So if He did it then, He can do it now. But He wants more from us. He doesn't want us just to ride on a boat. He wants us to create a boat. 
So the first type of faith is substance faith. I feel secure on this stadium because I add substance to it. Our faith, is, we can look in the Bible, we can talk to our grandparents, we can talk to other people that are sitting in the church and they tell us how God has moved for them. We know God can move for us. There's substance to it. The second kind of faith is that God created without substance. This is when I preach about imagination. Or things he could see, he imagined them and spoke them into existence. Hebrews 11, verse 3. By faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are not seen were made of things which are visible. I used Genesis where God created us an image because I wanted to, us to understand that when we talk about imagination, we're just doing what God has created us to do. We are created in the image of God. So God has given us supernatural ability to speak things into existence. We have cell phones because somebody, too bad it's not somebody sitting in this church, <laughs> imagine the device and took other inventions that had been made and created a cell phone. God didn't create the cell phone. Man created the cell phone from the earth, taking dominion of the earth, the minerals, whatever this earth offers us. Imagination is defined, and I'm going to bring you to the Proverbs 31 woman, is defined in our English translation sometimes as plan, plot, consider. We're just trying to make our English translation from the Hebrew flow, right? But it's all the same word. Proverbs 31, 16 says, now she considers or she imagines, she visualizes a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. So she imagined that she would someday own a field. But she didn't just stop there. The Bible says she took her profits. What were those profits from? Well, she made clothes. The Bible says this. This woman would go out and, and look for wool, look for flax to make thread so she could sew clothes. And she would take her clothing and she would sell it. So she had a business making clothes. She didn't eat that money. See, so many can't get ahead because we live paycheck to paycheck because everything we make we never put away. But we always got a lot of popcorn. You've got to learn not to eat all your profit. So she had a successful business, but she used those resources. And I'll tell you, God wants to, you to be blessed, but there's some things that pour, pour in so much money, there's other things that will pour in much more money. She realized that if she could buy a field and plant a vineyard on it, she would have more income coming in. Are you following me here? The Bible says she would get up early in the morning before the light and take care of her household. This woman was a worker. She would stay up late at night sewing. But she had a vision. She had an image. I'm going to buy that field someday. I'm not going to be a renter. I'm going to own. I'm, I'm not going to just own. I'm going to pay off my mortgage. I'm not going to just pay off my mortgage. I'm going to have a business. See, if you, if you have a side hustle, and I praise God, we all, many times we have a side hustle, but really, 
It's not profitable. I call them pyramid schemes. But you start at one level and you see this pyramid, and it's big on the paper. You're down here, but you can see, I can get to the top of that. Till you realize that that little small pyramid is actually a giant pyramid, and you're just a tiny thing down here. And you spend day after day, year after year after year, and you don't, you're, you're, you're busy, but you're not seeing really a profit. I would say if you're doing something on the side and it's not making a profit, drop it. See, you can sell oil, but if it doesn't really make you a profit, go to something that will make you a profit. Maybe that's a babysitting a kid. Maybe that's uh, working a second job. So you, I, I, I admire that you want to do that, but you've got to take control. And some things bring in income. Other things just use your time up. Being busy is not the same as being productive. The world wants us busy. God wants you productive. Proverbs 31, 16 says, wait a minute. It didn't, it didn't change. Proverbs 31, 27 says she's vigilant. In other words, she's paying attention. She's managing. She understands. She's not just sowing to get through life. She's sowing with a purpose to put money away so she can buy land. She's vigilant over the activities of her household. She doesn't eat the food of laziness. We are so blessed. We are so blessed, I could watch five movies in a night. And they're entertaining. I'll enjoy them. I'll live, I'll pretend I'm the character that's a star in the movie. But that is not going to get my dream. I could also watch a, 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 a video on how to educate myself, how to create something, because we are the information knowledge. So I would say don't just be busy or don't just, just, just feed your, your uh, uh, self with pleasure. Feed and educate and learn something at the same time. Take time. You have so many hours in the day. Take time to learn something that will educate you, that will help you achieve your dreams. 19 says, laziness cast one into a deep sleep. You're wore out. You stay up all night watching movies. <laughs> You don't feel like getting up and going to work. You're wore out. An idle person will suffer hunger. Wisdom is you know that at some point in time you might have to visit the doctor. You might need car tires put on your car. So wisdom is, even though everything's going right right now, you're still putting a little bit away. You're putting a little bit away for what? That rainy day when you might need something. Laziness brings poverty. Hard work makes one rich. Hard work, not busyness, productivity, not, not getting everything you make and eating it, but saving some to plant in the dream that you know that will help you down the line. Amen. Psalms 133 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren who dwell in unity. We are a unified church doing great things. We're not just multi-culture. We are in sync in trying to make this church experience, if you're a visitor here today, the most pleasant 
and funnest and, and unique experience of your life. We have people working in the parking lot. We have people at guests that come in and greet you. We have people that are taking care of kids and giving them the best day of their life. We are in unity working together to make this church great. Those who serve and, and those who help, and uh, uh, they are called the Levitical uh, priests. We are uh, uh, the people that come in here and, and they take care of the things behind the scene and, and in front of you and are serving you in the coffee car. They are the same type of people that God used to pick up and move the tabernacle. The tabernacle is where God dwelt. But when he moved, they would have to tear that tent down, reset it up. Whenever they do sacrifices, somebody had to clean. Somebody had to remove the carcasses. Somebody had to... Are you following me? So when you serve, you become part of the Levitical priesthood. See, when we work together, anything is possible. I use the illustration of the Tower of Babel, and I'm going to go to that in a, in a moment. But when we unite together as one, anything is possible. We're the getter done. Find a way. Everybody sees a problem. Winners see solutions. You want to you wanna go higher up in your company? You want to raise in your company? Well, everybody sees a problem. Bring a solution to your manager. Bring a solution to your company. What is our, one of the greatest visions, Pastor Joe, and it took him a long time to come up with this vision. Winning souls to Christ, that's what we're all about but then making them winners in life. So when you come to this church, we want you to step up to a new level in every aspect of your life. We want your dreams to come to pass. Liz and Eddie had a... Had, well, actually, it's Liz's dream and Eddie partnered with her, but she had a dream. She's had family uh, uh, in prison, and she's always had a dream. How can I help people? And so she, has, she created a home where if somebody's in prison and they, they're elderly and they, they get out of prison, they can come and live at that home. Amen. Amen. What a powerful dream. But she actually did it. Now she had a dream. You know what, Pastor? I want to I wanna go and feed the homeless. So she found a way to get food. She didn't come to the church and ask. She got tables herself. They went to a park. And they're going to sit up and they're going to feed people. That's all. This is her vision. She wants to make the world a better place. She gets there and there's a nice shade spot. And the lady's there. And this lady comes up and she says, well, you know, uh, we were, I was going to use a shade spot. And, you know, I, and, and they got to talk, and they both realized they were both Christians. So this lady had all these different government help programs coming to the park that day. Liz and Eddie knew nothing about that. But none of her laborers showed up. But Eddie and Liz, they begin to unload their tables. They begin to unload the food. They begin to prepare it. And they fed over 80 people this last weekend. And it's almost like God connected the dots because by faith, they took action to do the dream that God had given them. But can I tell you, it's just important if you start a business. Because every business owner is hiring people that are feeding families. They're making the world a better place. Every business owner needs powerful managers that makes his business work. So when you become a manager, 
you're also making the world a better place. I use the image that, uh, uh, that we were created in God's image. That we have the ability to call those things that aren't as if they are. Things we can't visualize, things we, don't, we can't really understand, but, but we have the ability that God gives us an image, but then we have to work. And what I wanted you to see in this scripture now is that God worked. Read this with me. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. So God worked six days. Yes, he imagined. Yes, he spoke in existence. And then he got to work creating it. What does that mean with God? I don't know. But we are created in God's image, so you are created to work. Work is not a bad word. It gives you purpose. It gives you dignity. It, 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 it is something that will enlarge your life. God partners with ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Things. Noah builds an ark day after day after day after day after day after day. Seven stories high, a football in a field long and, and, and a half a football wide. It was his labor that built that. See, in Genesis 2, we find, this is where we find that God created us to partner with him. It says, before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, there was no man to till or work or labor the ground that God made mankind to work the earth. Catch that with me. See, God's not looking. I love this quote. God's not looking for golden vessels or silver vessels. He's looking for yielded, willing, surrender vessels. It's, it's not your exterior. It's what God has put in your mind that he wants to use. It's not the color of your skin. It's what God's put in your mind he wants to use. Last, uh, uh, this morning's sermon I used Steve Harvey. How many know who Steve Harvey is? He's done all right. He yeah, has, you know net worth of hundreds of millions. He has a video about imagination. It's powerful. I want to encourage you. I was going to play it, but it's like 13 minutes long. I couldn't do it. But in that video, he makes this statement. It was a lot of hard work, too. Most of it, you won't catch that. But he talks about how as a little boy, he wanted to be on TV, watch TV, wanted to be on TV. So at class, you know, the first day of school, they, they say, what do you want to be, Johnny? What do you want to be, Stephen? And he wrote down, be on TV. So the teacher called him up to the front of the class. He thinks the teacher's going to pat him on the back. Oh, that's great. I'm so happy that, you know, you wrote that down. But no, she brings him up front to embarrass him. She says, you stutter. You can't even talk. How could you be on TV? There's no one in this neighborhood that's ever been on TV. How could you be on TV? Now, his mom kept preaching, I can do all things through Christ Jesus into his life. And that stuck. Was his mom perfect? Probably not. But the Word of God is perfect. 
And the Word of God says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Was it an easy journey? Well, he says in that video, he, he was divorced three times, lived in his car for three years. He had to learn how to talk without a stutter. But he did it. Did you hear me? He did it. Because of that one scripture kept playing in his mind over and over again. See, the world's going to tell you you can't. Your family might tell you you can't. But it's God who tells us we can. We are endorsed by God, not by other people. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 says this. Then the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend... Again, it's the same Hebrew word, abad, meaning labor, and keep it. The definition of abad is, is to work. Say that with me. Work. In any sense, by implication, to serve till to work for another, to serve another by labor. God has created us to partner with him to make this world a better place, to create, to invent, to raise up and make other people's lives better, to show love and kindness, to represent him. We are a light in this dark world, and we have greatness sitting inside of us, but we cannot let the world stop us. Adam and Eve's job was to care for the earth. But if you want your dreams to come to pass, it's going to take more than just an imagination. Of You're going to have to put your hand to something. You're going to have to make some phone calls. You're going to have to cut out maybe a movie or a TV series and educate yourself on how to do this. You're going to have to labor a little bit. But God will call you to a bigger vision than you can even imagine. Walk with him. Noah, Noah was under the curse. Remember, Adam and Eve sinned, and God said, cursed be the ground. They were still have to use the ground. We are still to till the ground. But now they would sweat when they, they tilled the ground. Things would become a little harder. I'm going to imagine, I imagine Noah had some hard days creating that ark. You're going to have some hard days creating the dream that God has placed in your life some days. But you've got to commit that I'm going to press on through. I'm going to continue to go. I am not giving up on this. God, you called me to this. I'm going to do this. You told me I should own a business. I'm going to own a business. You told me that I should learn this trade. I'm going to learn this trade. You told me that I should be a head and not a tail. I'm going to become the manager of my company. Noah's life wasn't pointless because he walked righteously with God. All that simply means is he heard what God said, he obeyed God, and he kept walking the way God told him to walk. So he lived in the curse, but he was not uh, under the curse because he was walking righteously with God. See, if you believe God's going to save you and take you to heaven and the rapture is going to happen, you're going to be sharing that with other people. Amen. This church is an ark for the lost. This church is a place we welcome people in that don't know God or, or have slipped away from God. This church is an ark to bring people in, to take them on up into heaven. That's why we need Levitical workers helping Hebrews 11, but without faith it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God will reward those who diligently seek him. No, you're not working your way into heaven. That's a free gift. 
But you can have a blessed life. You can have favor. You can have the dreams that you want in your life. They can come to pass, but you got to keep him first and foremost. First God, then your dream. Verse 7. By faith, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Have we, have we been told that Jesus is coming back? Someday... Jesus is coming back. We've been all told that. Are we walking that way like he's coming back? My pastor told me, it stuck with me, I say it continuously, live every day like Jesus is coming back today. Because no man knoweth the hour, day, or time. But plan your life 20, 30 years ahead. What is the plan for your life? What is the dream that you want in your life? If you don't have that down, do it today. That's why you're hearing this sermon, to inspire you. It don't matter your age. God doesn't care your age. Abraham had kids at 99, 100 years old. Then his wife Sarah died. Do you think he... Said, all right, well, that's it. No, he remarried, had more kids. <laughs> it doesn't matter your age. It don't matter how young you are or how old you are. You got to start today. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. See, Noah prepared an ark for the saving of his household. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. But there has to be commitments made, church. The devil is good of getting us off track. He's good. He got Adam and Eve off track. That's when the curse came in. He got them off track. Was God done with them? No. He wasn't done with them. But there are consequences to bad decisions. They, there are setbacks. So the sooner you start making good, wise decisions, as soon as you start taking that little bit of extra money and envisioning, okay, I'm setting this aside for I have something greater. I'm going to buy me a field. I'm going to own a house. I'm not going to just own a house. I'm going to pay the house off because God is all powerful. I'm not going to just be a worker here. I'm going to be a manager in this company. With that said, I want every head in here bowed, every eye closed. I want to challenge you today to begin to work your dream. I don't know what God's placed on your heart. Neither does a lot of people. Most people might say, oh, that could never happen. But it's not their dream. It's your dream. If Steve Harvey had listened to his teacher, if he had let her negative words, he would not be the most watched person today. See, it's easy to get comfortable when you're success. You have a little bit of success. It's easy to stop and not go on. But God wants you to go on because he wants your life to be a blessing unto other lives. You're sitting in here today. Some of you are excited because you have dreams. You know what? So other of you, your dreams have become stagnant. The devil said it's over. It can't happen. But I'm going to tell you, today's the day that God re-energizes you to start dreaming again. Today is the day that you take the next step that you need to do to fulfill that dream God's put into your heart. And if that's you in here today, God is speaking to you, I want you to raise your hand right now. Amen, 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 amen. Many, many hands going on. Others of you, this is the first time you maybe even came to a church or 
heard about uh, Jesus, but I'm going to tell you, Jesus loves you. He died. He does not want you to live the rest of your life in heaviness and guilt. He wants to set you free right today, this morning. And why heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you're watching online, God wants to touch you. You want to know Jesus Christ. You want to feel this forgiveness he has for you. Right now, if you know that you are not right with God, lift your hand up and put it right back down. Amen, amen, amen. You're watching online, God sees that. Say these words with me. Jesus, forgive me for all the evil I've committed, all the bad mistakes I've done, change my life heal my mind I choose to listen to you obey your commandments and walk righteously before you I give you my life amen